I think these might be a game changer. Hey guys, it's Epic, and today I want to talk to you about my brand new Dan Durston carbon fiber trekking poles. I never thought I was going to go back to a pair of carbon trekking poles again because I am notoriously hard on trekking poles, and I never thought the carbon fiber ones were durable enough. I've probably broken about six pairs of carbon fiber poles in my entire hiking career. I broke my carbon distance Z's from Black Diamond out on the Pacific Northwest Trail. I snapped them both in the middle of a bushwhack. And I've also broken two pairs on the Appalachian Trail. The last pair was in the proprioceptive death march that is the last 40 miles of Pennsylvania. Anybody who's hiked the AT can feel my pain. But after going through all that, I decided to hang up carbon fiber trekking poles in favor of my Lecky TIs, which are carbon fiber and titanium mix. They have been super durable, they've been going super strong. I have never had to replace them in the last four years. I really never thought I was gonna go back to a straight pair of carbon fiber poles again, but I saw Dan Durston's video on the Iceline trekking poles. I was really intrigued by the design, and since I like his backpacks, I figured for the first time in years, I was gonna give a pair of carbon fiber poles a try. So these trekking poles come in at nine and a half ounces a pair, or 270 grams. That means 135 grams per pole, or 4.75 ounces per pole. They also come with a Dyneema stuff sack that only weighs 5 grams if you feel like carrying that. The collapsed length of these poles is 49 centimeters or 19.5 inches. The minimum extended length of these poles is 37 inches or 95 centimeters. And the maximum extended length is 50 inches or 127 centimeters. The upper pole comes in at a diameter of 18 millimeters and the bottom two poles are 16 millimeters each. The shaft is made of high modulus carbon and the handle grip is made of an EVA foam. The poles also feature Comperdell basket attachments and a standard carbide tip. Okay, so at nine and a half ounces per pair, these are arguably the lightest trekking poles on the market. And as cool as that is, that's not really what got my attention. What I wanna do now is I wanna show you the difference between a standard trekking pole design and what Dan Durston did with these poles. To do that, I brought out my old trekking poles. These are my Lecky Carbon TI trekking poles. They're divided into three sections. The top section is 16 millimeters in diameter. The middle section is 14 millimeters in diameter. And the bottom section is 12 millimeters in diameter and these telescope out using two clamp locks. Now, because it's designed like this, the place that takes the most amount of shock, which is the bottom section, is the thinnest section at 12 millimeters. And that's gonna make it so that these poles could eventually wear out. Now, these ones have done okay because, as I said, they're carbon fiber and titanium, but any design like this I've ever had that's been a carbon fiber pole has broken right down here eventually. So what Dan has done is he's made a pole that's more structurally sound at the bottom, making it so it's got less chance of breaking. And the way that he's done that is he started with an 18 millimeter pole in diameter at the top. Then it telescopes one time to a 16 millimeter pole, which is where most poles start. And then the next pole goes in on a fast connector. And since it doesn't telescope out from the middle pole, it is also 16 millimeters in diameter with just the smallest amount of taper down here at the basket connector. This makes for a stronger pole overall because it has a larger diameter up top and we don't have as large of a taper down here. I've already tested these out. Walking around with them, you can already tell that there's less vibration in the pole when you're using them. Another thing that I really think will increase the longevity of these poles is the fact that unlike the Leckies, which have a plastic connector right here with a little plastic sprocket that you hand tighten to dial in the tightness of your poles, this one has an aluminum clamp and it has a screw on this side that I can just use my pocket knife to dial it in. I really think these poles will last a lot longer with metal as opposed to plastic parts. If you look at my Lecky poles broken down in comparison to the Dan Durston Ice Line poles, you can see that the Ice Line poles have a much smaller profile for packing away. I also really appreciate that this pole comes with an EVA foam handle as I do not like cork handles at all. So I haven't been using these poles long enough to really have any serious cons with them, but I do have a couple of concerns that could turn into cons later. My first concern about this pole is with the aforementioned EVA foam handle. While I have no particular issues with the small EVA foam handle that's on this pole, Standard trekking poles often come with an extended handle that allow you to switch your grip from top to bottom depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill and the severity of the gradient. With the ice line pole, you have no option to switch your grip or change position of your hands. My second concern is that these poles do not come with any wrist straps. So if you're used to having those around your wrists on the trail and you're used to being able to relax your hand on your poles and put your weight on your wrist straps, this is not gonna be an option. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try and see if I feel like I need them. Only time will tell whether or not this is a big deal breaker for me. My third concern is with the Comperdale basket connectors. Now, Dan recommends that you go ahead and give these poles a try without baskets. He doesn't seem to think that you'll need them. 
I have only used these poles so far on firm ground and I haven't had the tips sink into the ground at all. I have yet to use them on loose terrain with loose soil or sand, so only time will tell if I'll need to attach baskets. But if basket attachments are necessary, you do have the option of buying some summer baskets from Copperdale and they will snap directly on the basket connectors on the pole. My final concern is the paint that is used to put the numbers on the side of the trekking pole. I've only telescoped these out a handful of times and already my 125 centimeter mark is rubbing off of the pole. While this is not a big deal for it only being one number, if this continues down the pole to the other numbers, it may be difficult to dial in my trekking pole to know exactly what length it is. Ultimately guys, I have high hopes for these poles. I'm already seeing some advantages to using them. I was very excited to get them. It's gonna take a much more long-term test to see if this is a good pair of poles that will last me or if it's gonna be another pair of carbon poles that I destroy. I will be doing a long-term review on these in the future and letting you guys know how they hold up. Well, that's all I have for you today, guys. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think about these Dan Durst and Iceland trekking poles. If you like what we do, be sure and like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when we make future content. You can also check us out on Instagram and support us on Patreon for ad-free and bonus content. Now get off your butts and go play outside. Hi, everyone. Come and check out our new website, epicoutdoors.com, for hiking videos and tons of gear recommendations. If you like what you see, consider subscribing so that you know when we make future content. We also have a hiker resources page where you can plan your next adventure. Whether you're a first timer or a seasoned backpacker, epicoutdoors.com has something for everyone. See you guys down the trail.